Welcome to Dungeon Academics. My name is Thomas and I will be your instructor. This video is specifically for you, Colby, and it's a maths intensive one. So if anyone is frightened of large amounts of maths, uh, this is the perfect thing to watch for Halloween, which is coming up in just over a month's time. Okay, so uh, Colby on D4, Dungeons & Dragons Deep Dive, just put out a video for a sorcerer, a wild magic sorcerer, using Chromatic Orb as their primary source of damage. And this is a great fun build, and there's a lot of maths involved, and particularly an interesting piece of maths that he said he was glossing over. This is the damage calculation when re-rolling dice for chromatic orb. Okay, what does this all mean? Well, let's look at the 2024 version of Dungeons & Dragons. Chromatic orb is a uh, ranged attack spell. You have to roll to hit with it, and then you roll a number of damage dice equal to the level of the spell plus two. So level one chromatic orb, you roll 3d8, all the way to a level 9 chromatic orb, you roll 11d8 damage. And if you roll any doubles, the orb jumps to another target within 30 feet and hits a secondary target. And at higher level, it can jump to more targets. In fact, the level spell slot used tells you how many targets it can hit. Now, it does need a separate hit roll for each of these targets, but each target offers uh, another chance for it to jump and hit an additional target up to the level of the spell. Now, the maths behind this is quite easy. The problem, not the problem, the opportunity, is that the empowered spell, meta magic option, lets you re-roll a number of damage dice up to your charisma modifier with a minimum of one. And what that means is that if you didn't roll a double on your chromatic orb damage dice, you now have the opportunity to re-roll some dice to not only improve the damage, but change the odds of getting a double. It gives you another chance of scoring a double. Now, let's be clear. Um, in this mathematical model, I am not optimising for damage. I am only optimizing for getting a double. Let's say you've cast Chromatic Orb at ninth level, that's 11d8, and you've rolled 11 ones. This is statistically unlikely. As a very rough calculation, if you were to get a million people to play this sorcerer, and they somehow managed to play Dungeons and Dragons every single day, I know, and use Chromatic Orb at ninth level three times every day, you would expect someone to roll 11 ones once every eight years or so. So this is a vanishingly unlikely uh, circumstance. But because you've rolled more than one of the same number, you've rolled 11 ones, you would then get the opportunity to bounce it onto another target. Now, this empowered spell metamagic option can only be used once per turn. So I would argue it's probably a good idea to save it for a situation where you don't roll uh, a double. And in fact, as long as you're casting the spell at seventh level above or above, you are guaranteed to roll a double. At seventh level, you are rolling nine dice and even if the first eight dice were all different, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that ninth dice, dice must repeat a roll. So at level seven, eight, and, or nine, you're guaranteed for it to bounce every single time. So in that case, using the meta, empowered meta magic to uh, reroll a low damage roll makes sense. But at lower levels, I, I would save it. This is a judgment call. And it's very difficult to mathematically model judgment calls, which is why psychology, sociology, economics and politics are very difficult to mathematically model because it relies on human judgment. There is a big input of human level decision in all of those fields. So you can't optimise purely based on numbers because there's judgment involved. And in this case, if you... 
if you rolled four dice for damage and you rolled one, two, seven, eight, would you, and you had the option to re-roll up to three dice, would you just re-roll the one and the two? Keep the seven and eight because they're both good damage numbers. Or would you only keep the eight and re-roll the one, two and the seven? Now, one of them gives you a slightly higher damage yield. If you keep the seven and the eight, seven's a good number to keep. But it reduces the chance of the chromatic orb bouncing to another target. On the other hand, if you roll the one, the two and the seven, you are likely to get a lower damage yield, but a higher chance of it bouncing. In this mathematical model, all I have done is optimised for the chance of bouncing. Now, I had to do several stages to this. The first thing that I wanted to do is determine, is the average of a set of dice where all the results are different the same as the average for a set of dice where there could be one or more duplicate? That's a, that's a tough one to, to model. So let's start with rolling eight dice. If you roll eight dice, the and we're talking D8. Whenever I mention dice in this, it's always going to be D8. If we roll eight dice, the average expected score is 36. Now, the only way to not roll a double with eight dice is to get one of each value. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that also has a total of 36. So the average of getting... No doubles is the same as get of the average of getting any other result. That's fine. What about with seven dice? I, I wanted to check just a couple of stages here. Now, if you roll seven dice and you don't get any doubles, what that means is you've rolled one of each result except for one result. So I calculated all of these. I said, what if you roll two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you don't roll a one? Well, there's actually 5,040 different ways to arrange 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that has a total score of 35. There's also 5,040 different ways of rolling 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, not rolling a 2. That has an average score of 34. And I did all of these up to and including not rolling an 8. So rolling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In each case, there's 5,040 different ways to arrange those numbers. I calculated the scores for each of those combinations. And then I deducted the scores multiplied by the number of different ways of rolling it from the total data pool of rolling all possible combinations on eight dice. And what I found is that the average for the uh, sets with no repetition was 31.5. And that's exactly the same as the average of all the other sets with repetition. So when you're rolling seven dice, you get the same average score if you have no repetitions as you would otherwise. I repeated this with rolling 6d8. And I found, again, that the average score on 68 with no repetitions is 27. And that's the average score you get with repetitions as well. So, rolling or not rolling any doubles, and this includes triples as well, any multiples, does not affect the average score of the dice. Now, this is important because what I'm going to be doing later is saying, let's look at average rolls and take away some of the lowest. And if I take away a selection that's not got any repeats in it, I want to know that that selection and what's left both follow the same distribution curves. I'm not going to be skewing my results by just looking at sets with repetitions and without repetitions, because both of those sets have the same average score. So what was my next step? Well, what I needed to do is I needed to say to work out what is the average result on a set of dice when I take away the lowest N dice. When you're rolling damage for Chromatic Orb and you've got three re-rolls, it makes sense to re-roll the three lowest values and keep what's left. Um, and this is assuming there's no repetitions as well. So if I roll seven dice, 
I'm going to, and there's no repetitions, I'm going to keep the four highest dice and re-roll the three lowest dice. Now, when I re-roll those three lowest dice, I'm just expecting to get three times the average score, whatever it is. But what's the average score on the four dice that are left behind? Now, fortunately, I found uh, a, an app that does this for me. I'm just getting the bookmark here. It's at something called rumkin.com. Rumkin.com uh, die roll die roll stats. I'll include a link to this uh, page in the description of the video. And this gave me a way to do roll a number of dice and drop the lowest results. So let's say I was rolling eight dice and dropping four of them. I could find what the average of the four high, the average score for the four highest dice is. This allows me to work out the probability of rolling a double when I re-roll some dice, or a multiple when re-roll some dice, and a new average score. And that's what I did. I made a spreadsheet of it. I'll uh, I'll link it. It's not the neatest spreadsheet, but hopefully you'll be able to figure out what's going on. And the first tab is the important tab. It is the results tab. In fact, I'll just rename it now. Rename results in capital. Okay, and what this shows is it shows the level that Chromatic Orb is being cast at, one through nine, the number of damage dice being used, which is three through 11, the average damage for the spell without any rerolls, and the chance of a double. When I say double, I mean a repetition, at least a double, and that's abbreviated to COD, chance of double. And with a level one chromatic orb, your expected damage is 13.5 and your chance of double is 34.4. With a level four chromatic orb, your average damage is 27 and your chance of a double is 92.3%. Very good. Once you get to level seven and above, the chance of damage is 100%, a chance of a double is 100%. And the damage goes from 40.5 at level seven 45 at level 8, and 49.5 at level 9. These are very nice. But what happens if you can re-roll some dice? Well, I've included situations where you can re-roll 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 dice. I mean, I suppose theoretically you can get a, a level, sorry, a, a charisma plus 6 on your sorcerer if you have the correct manuals as a magic item. I'm not worrying about that right now. So I'm including up to five rerolls, and I'm including rerolling up to the number of dice minus one. So in this circumstance, if you've rolled three dice for damage, I'm going to let you reroll two of them. Now I suppose there are some circumstances where you would want to reroll all three. It doesn't affect the chance of getting a double, which is why I didn't consider this. So if you if you rolled really low on three dice and you could re-roll three, you should. But the chance of you only rolling ones and ones through sixes is only about twenty five uh, percent. Uh, no, it's one minus three quarters to the power of three. Let's do that. One minus zero point. 75 to the power of three. You've got about a 60% chance of only rolling small numbers. Um, this is reasonable, and I would suggest re-rolling it in those circumstances, but in most circumstances, you're only going to re-roll two of the three dice. You'll keep the highest number and then re-roll the two different ones. In the same way, if you're rolling four dice, I'm assuming you're always keeping the highest one and then re-rolling the other three so on and so forth. By the time you get to level four chromatic orb, you're rolling six dice. So if you're going to get the chance to re-roll five, you'd automatically keep the highest one and re-roll the other five. That's the assumption that I'm making. And I've made this table and it tells you, it tells you that for a level six chromatic orb, you have a 99.8% chance of rolling a double anyway. But if you don't, if you get to re-roll one dice, 
your average damage should increase from 36 to 39.5 and you have a 87.5% chance of getting a double or repeated number with just that one reroll. But if you reroll five more dice, your average damage goes from 36 to 43.5 and you have a 99.6% second chance of getting a repetition. This is quite interesting numbers for me, um, but modelling this even further is very difficult because Chromatic Orb requires a hit roll and um, there's it's a multi-stage process where one thing can change. Modelling Chromatic Orb where you have the same hit roll for each target and no re-rolls is quite easy. You have a certain percent chance of getting another attack, a certain percent chance of that attack hitting, and repeat. But once you throw in a one-use only re-roll, you have to now model in, does that re-roll happen on the first instance of the orb, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, all the way up to the final instance or the, the second final instance, um, because once it hits its final target, you might as well use the reroll just to maximise your damage. Because of this, the actual modelling side is an entirely separate project. But what I have done is I've created a little primer that's got your percentage chance of getting a double or a repetition and the modified damage when you use that reroll that you can only use once per turn. This, I think, it's what you were looking for. So uh, if this helps with your spreadsheet, Colby, please do use it. Um, I don't think it will radically change the numbers, but mathematically, I found the whole process interesting. And I hope you get some value out of it too. So thank you for listening to me talk about maths and enjoy your next game, whatever it may be.